Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our uh, 2021 operating budget meeting, which is the conclusion of the capital budget meeting we did uh, last year in November. Um, I will um, uh, call the meeting to order and note that we are all here in attendance. Um, I also want to let the public know that a special council meeting um, will be, is being held today, March 30th at 9 o'clock to discuss the 2021 uh, budget. It is also noted that there will be a city council in camera closed session meeting uh, today. City council will be requested to consider approval of the following resolution that uh, city council enter into in camera session to consider the following items pursuant to, two, to section 239 of the municipal act. And there are two bullets. First bullet is in camera report number DHR 2021-05 regarding labor relations or employee negotiations pursuant to section 2392D of the municipal act. And bullet number two is in camera report number ECDAB 2021-12 regarding labor relations or employee negotiations pursuant to section 2392D of the municipal act. Uh, for those watching at home or streaming, you can go to the city of Belleville website to see the agenda um, under today's meeting and uh, it includes all of the documents that council will be considering. Um, I will give everyone sort of like a brief idea of what the timing is going to be this morning or today. Um, we will, I'm expecting that we will run uh, till about 1030 or 1045 before we take a break. Um, and then we will reconvene at 11 a.m. for our in-camera portion of the meeting. Um, from about 11 o'clock until 11.45, we will, uh, we're expected to be in camera. And then we'll take our lunch break from 11.45 till about 12.15. And then we will reconvene uh, for the afternoon at around 12.15. Now that's the tentative schedule. We'll see how, how we make out, but that's sort of the, uh, the idea of how we're going. And uh, that's for uh, the, the public and the media to know um, that we'll be in camera from about 11 to 11.45. With that, I will ask if there are any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof from anybody. Seeing none, I uh, will move on. Um, there are a number of items that we will not deal with at today's meeting. Um, items number two, four, five, eight B, eight C, nine, 11, 12, and 13 from our regular agenda. <clears throat> so we'll move to uh, deputations and uh, deputation uh, number one, 6.1 is Trevor Pross the Chief Executive Officer of the Belleville Public Library who will make a presentation to Council, a correspondence item 7.1 uh, and operating issue number D1-1. Um, I will ask Trevor to go ahead and uh, you can make your presentation. And then following that, we'll ask for the resolution to receive it and direct it to operating issues. Good morning, Trevor, how are you today? Morning, good, Your Worship, thank you. How are you? Good, the floor is Everyone yours, thank me? you. Okay, just let me know if there's any uh, issue with the mic. Um, so good morning, Your Worship. Good morning, members of council, uh, CAO Bove, directors, senior staff. Uh, I see Chief Callahan there um, and uh, the media and the public. Um, as much as we don't like the Zoom, it is nice to see everybody without their masks. So that's one thing. Okay, so should I be sharing my screen? Can I share my screen? You can share your screen. Great, okay, here we go. Okay, so um, 2021 operating request. We're gonna look at um, some of our stats, our uh, trends for the um, past several years with the municipal grant requests what we're doing this year in terms of what we're requesting and um, we'll talk a little bit about the digital um, uh, usage. So in 2020, our CERC did go down. Um, our usage did drop quite a bit, 23%. Um, basically, we were closed completely for several months and of course, in and out of various lockdowns. The digital stuff did go up um, by 22%. So it's an interesting um, correlation that uh, digital did sort of pick up some of that slack. Um, one of the great things we did when everyone was stuck at home was we offered um, some of our digital products and our online courses um, to staff, to library staff, to city staff. Um, we had a big increase in our use of Gale courses, which is an online college level training um, that you get for free with your library card. 
Um, so that went up by 89%, which is quite significant. Um, the programs moved online, of course, uh, which did have quite a success, interestingly. Um, so while our number of programs went down by 42%, actual attendance went way up at 109% uh, increase. So I think what we're going to see going forward is people were so um, happy with these online programs that we'll probably continue them um, as much as we can, even when we're, when we're back at normal. Um, some of the other things we've done, the take home kits are a big hit. So you can't come to the library. So here's um, the library coming home. We did 4,000 of those kits, 4,067. Um, so our staff really needs to be commended on that one. Okay, so just in terms of our trends, um, this year, obviously we have quite a, a bit of a increase um, more than usual. So I did wanna kind of show trends um, just to show it is um, a bit of an unusual budget. Um, so you're seeing about a 20% over um, those six years. Um, it's a 2.7% average, average increase between 2015 and 2020. Um, when you add that this year in 2021, that moves up to a 3.3% average over those six years. So or seven years. So um, certainly we've tried to keep things um, on a pretty even keel and uh, this year is a bit unusual. So what exactly is pushing us up more than usual this year? So several things that I've listed and I've put it into a bit of a chart, um, staffing, uh, some revenue reduction. So things like um, gallery art sales, uh, room rentals, um, late fines, all those little fees and fines and things that we did to generate revenue sort of collapsed in 2020. Um, we've always brought in about 4% um, of our budget as our own revenue and that's, um, gone down to more like one or two percent uh facilities uh you know that always kind of goes up um but we put a little more into our budget because our building is getting old it's about uh, 15 years old now uh the collection budget we did drop down for 2020 because we knew that the usage would go down um and that did work well in terms of um, meeting the demand with the budget that was a bit less um, but now we're trying to bring that up so it doesn't quite bring us back up to our um, pre-covid level but um, we wanted to bring it up because people really demanding um, you know those those items again the the new books the new bestseller uh, hardbacks which are pretty expensive that kind of thing uh, so collection, and then lastly, um, our security costs. So we do have a security guard now. Um, we did have a lot of incidents um, over the past couple of years. It went quite a bit up um, in 2020. That's leveled off now with our security guard. So really, really good um, investment as far as I'm concerned. It um, saves a lot of staff time and a lot of stress, and um, it just provides a good safe environment for both uh, the public and the staff. Um, in terms of digital resources, um, you can see just some numbers here. Uh, this is our main digital um, stuff that we're offering. So films, eBooks, movies, um, Overdrive is uh, audiobooks and eBooks. We've got this new product, Flipster, so you can see uh, magazines on your tablet or your computer. And then I mentioned Gale courses and then several other things. Um, we offer um, Canadian Reference Center as a research database, Tumble Books as a children's um, ebook platform. So just a nice variety. And that's really, um, you know, the, the board has to be, um, the library board should get some kudos here because this is the result of about 10 years of um, development in the digital. So we were ready for the um, pandemic as much as anyone could be. Um, and that's why we were able to meet that demand um, in uh, 2020. So 
it is kind of an interesting um, process to watch. The digital um, increase isn't just because of the pandemic. So there was already a jump, more digital in 2019. And then of course, in 2020, the digital really went up. So, um, excuse me. So for 30, you know, for to go from 14% to 30% in two years, it's uh, basically doubled. It's pretty incredible. So we'll probably see that drop off a little bit now that um, hopefully things are getting back to normal, but it is kind of um, an interesting trend. The big one that's really dying is the DVDs, the, the disc media, DVD, CDs. Um, those are, they're not making them as much. They're, people aren't using them as much. Um, and we have, like I say, uh, lots of online um, movies and stuff for people to watch. That's obviously what the young people are kind of used to is just going on to Netflix, going on to, um, uh, Amazon Prime. So we've we've managed to kind of get in there with um, some great digital products so that we can keep up with those um, those demands. And uh, that's about it. I'm going to stop my share. And uh, if there's any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Prost. Any questions for uh, Trevor? Uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Prost, and good morning. Uh, you mentioned, of course, with COVID, everything changes a lot. And uh, I see that uh, the attendance has gone down, the physical attendance, but digital has gone up. Has, has your marketing changed at all? How are you getting out to the citizens in Belleville on, in terms of the products? And I think that's great that you have so many offerings. Uh, I must confess, some of those are new to me, which is, which is great. So knowing that as a counselor, how are we getting the message out to our constituents about what we have at the library? Uh, yeah, through the through your worship to Councillor Williams, thank you because it's a it's not something we've done a huge amount of just in terms of budget. Ads are very expensive, um, but Facebook um, is a good one, so we've used that a lot. So Facebook, um, Twitter, is you know free. A lot of it you can pay you know a hundred dollars to boost a post. Um, so that's pretty much the main thing. We've spent a little bit, um, like $500 here and there on a couple other type of ads, um, visitor guides, things like that. But in terms of reaching um, the public in Belleville and in our area, it's usually social media. Um, and I think when everything closed up, it was almost like, I don't wanna say, um, it was, it, was, it was almost a promotion just in itself because everyone's at home and they're like, what am I gonna do now? And it's like, oh, let me see what they've got at the library. So um, we haven't made a massive push on marketing. It's a lot of word of mouth um, and uh, social media obviously is a big one. So yeah, thank you for that. Okay, thank you. And, and maybe, maybe one thing I could suggest uh, you could you could discuss with the with the communication staff would be the Belleville Magazine. Maybe it's worth, uh, you know, especially if, the, if there's, we hope not, if there's any more restrictions uh, upcoming with COVID, but it, it might be something that's worth uh, just getting that out. And I think in general as well for the year, but uh, you know, you have some great products, the library is evolving. And as we know with COVID, maybe we're not going back to life as we know it anyhow. So perhaps that's worth uh, looking at, but thank you. Good, all right, anyone else questions? Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, not so much a question, but just wanted to publicly say thank you to Trevor and uh, his staff and, and all the library staff. Uh, it's been a uh, difficult year, obviously, like every other department and uh, with the library operating at arm's length from the city done a tremendous job to pivot to the online platforms and the take home kits. And then also uh, the library has been partnering with educators as well and providing teacher kits uh, so that uh, there's uh, that resource there as well. So uh, the library really has become uh, a great place, particularly during the pandemic. Um, and, uh, you know, there was obviously the drop in the regular circulation, 
forms continue to be popular and uh, uh, a few years ago the board started talking about modernization of the library and uh, certainly uh, we're seeing those dividends pay off so I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Pross and uh, his team. Good. Anyone else? Thanks. Well, uh, Mr. Pross, uh, you know, I'll echo those comments. It was, it's been a difficult year for everybody. Um, but as the city, the library has gotten through without any layoffs uh, so far to your employees, and I know that they've uh, worked from home and done the best they can. So certainly uh, we appreciate that. And I also want to say thank you to the, um, to our councillors that serve on the library board, Councillor Carr, Councillor Kelly, and Councillor Thompson. Um, we certainly appreciate your uh, serving on the board and providing uh, direction and, um, and oversight to that operation and uh, wish you well, uh, Trevor, as, uh, as we deal with whatever comes next with COVID. Thank you, your worship. So, Thank you, everyone. Great. So uh, the resolution is that the presentation by Trevor Pross, CEO Belleville Public Library, be received and referred to correspondence item 7.1 and operating issue number D1-1. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Carr and Councillor Kelly, uh, all in favor, it's carried. So we'll now move to uh, item 6-2 where uh, Police Chief Mike Callahan and Board Chair Jack Miller on behalf of the Belleville Police Service Board will make a presentation to Council uh, with respect to the 2021 police budget. Good morning, uh, Chair Jack Miller. How are you today? I'm very well, Your Worship, Mayor Panchuk, and uh, good morning to you and the Council and staff. Uh, I'm just the window dressing here. I'm actually coming to you from uh, the desk of Chief Callahan, and I'm going to give it back to him in a moment. But on behalf of the Belleville Police Services Board, we do present the 2021 operating budget for our police service. In 2020, uh, our Belleville Police Service attended approximately 30,000 calls for assistance. And some may have been routine, and some were certainly very dangerous. They threatened the safety of uh, our officers and uh, certainly the safety and security of our city. But to a police officer, even routine calls have the chance of being very dangerous. It's the job of the Police Services Board to determine a budget that meets the needs of our citizens, and this budget does that. However, it does contain a number of base budget adjustments required for our new building, which is twice the size of the old one. It also includes some one-time issues that hopefully will not be part of the 2022 budget. And as has been the case since 2013, uh, the police budget includes a million dollars, which will then go back against the cost of this building. And so that is also part of the operating budget. So now I'll turn it over to Chief Mike Callahan. He'll give you a high level breakdown and a walkthrough of our budget and answer any questions you may have. So thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, and uh, staff of, uh, of the City of Belleville. Thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, give you some uh, high-level uh, examples of why our budget is 6.32%. Uh, we, uh, When we were going through the process, we were trying to ensure that we were meeting our legislative requirements, but at the same time being very respectful of the taxpayers. And as the chair had alluded to, our primary challenges is, is that 94% of our budget is salary and benefits. And when we look at that, we have a remaining 6% of that budget for the entire operations of our police service. When we look at some of those challenges, we uh, have to understand, appreciate the fact that we went from a 37,000 square foot building to a 67,000 square foot building. And while this building is considered an intelligent building with uh, the auto dimming of lights and the auto dimming of temperatures, um, it's still a much larger footprint. Some of the operational cost impact factors are a 336% increase in our natural gas bills, a 254% increase in our hydro bills, and a 154% increase in our maintenance of the building. And what I mean by that is our things like our lawn maintenance, our uh, snow removal and uh, care for the building. I'm happy to report though, we have 17 different items in which we um, were able to reduce the impact to taxpayers. 
And I just want to, in a very high level sense, give an example of what we tried to do. When we look at our landscaping, we've decided to do that in-house. We bought a zero turn lawnmower and we believe that we're gonna be able to save ourselves $15,000 a year. We've moved to an all season tire versus having summer and winter tires, which has saved us $16,000 a year. Even down to the minutia of looking at the cost of our windshield washer. We've gone to a bulk windshield washer now, saving us 20 cents a liter on that. We have a joint forces room that we'll be able to utilize for training now. And as a result of hosting satellite training from the Ontario Police College, we'll be able to reduce our costs for each officer that we host a course for by $2,500. And that's pretty significant when you're looking at the overall dollar value spent on our training. We changed our supplier of our footwear to reduce the cost by $100 uh, per, per pair, that is. Um, we've moved to an online <clears throat> auction sale to increase the dollar value for our items such as uh, police vehicles that are being retired. And uh, something we're very proud of is the support of the community in our canine program. And if it wasn't for the support of this community to a total of $74,000, we would be unable to carry out our canine program. The nice fact of that is too, is that <clears throat> these donators from the, our community have offered to continue that support in the future. We're utilizing uh, digital documents as opposed to courier service, again, saving us $2,100 a year. Um, we cut our training costs this year from $200,000 down to $115,000. This will provide us an opportunity to provide the minimum legislative training. Um, however, as a young service, we know that we're gonna to have to continue to provide that additional training. We uh, were very fortunate to get grant funding in the tune of $65,000 and $17,000 for human trafficking investigations. We've also gone with 12 auxiliary officers this year versus 15, which will save us approximately $9,000 to upfit those officers, those three uh, auxiliary officers. We also have a, a project called Project Renewal. And this is a program that we're working with the OPP on. And uh, we have three officers working out of our police service, as well as with our intelligence and our drug unit on the opioid crisis. And that's saving us about $400,000 a year, which is a huge cost. Another one is the Health IM funding. We just received uh, savings or, or funding for the next 20, or, sorry, for the next five years at $20,000 a year. So that's $100,000 over five years. We're also looking at, uh, we have purchased surveillance equipment so that we can reduce the number of officers required to secure a scene. And uh, we've gone to a uh, localized printing within our building to reduce our consumables uh, for printers by about $7,500 a year. What I wanna look at and talk to you about as well is when we look at our police comparators across the province, we are primarily the same size as Cornwall and North Bay. And when we look at the uh, police officer or the cop to pop ratios, we see that Cornwall, for example, has 506 members of the community to one police officer. And uh, Again, when we look at the North Bay, there are 515 community members to one officer. When we look at the cop to pop ratio here in Babel, we're 551 members of the community to one police officer. So when we look at the overall costs of the operating costs for Cornwall, we're $556,000 less than Cornwall per year and $1.554 million less than North Bay. So we believe that we're providing a very, very good economical service uh, to our community and ensuring that we're meeting that goal of making Belleville the safest community in Ontario as we move forward. If you have any specific questions, Mr. Mayor or council members, I would be more than glad to answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Callahan. Uh, questions and comments from uh, council. Councillor Thompson, I'll start with you first and then Councillor Williams. Yeah, I got two questions. Um... When you talk about, and it's only a minor thing, uh, the all season tires that you're going with, I thought insurance companies give a discount for winter tires rather than all season. Rather. And so the saving you're staying with tires is going to be offset um, by the not getting the discount on the insurance. 
these winter tires are actually rated. They have the um, winter tire symbol on them. So uh, we're, we're in that, that area that we're protected, still protected by that discount that's provided by um, normally you would see under residential, um, uh, residential insurance policies. However, all the vehicles in our fleet are either all wheel drive or four wheel drive, which makes a difference to the insurance companies as well. Okay, and um, I got two more on the uh, mental health, and I've asked it every year, Mike, so this is no different. On the mental health issue, is there sufficient, in your estimation, money in there for training and keeping the health of our officers um, primarily? Well, we're working on actually, uh, Councillor, two uh, facets of that. One is to ensure that we have the support mechanisms for our officers and support in the context of additional training for the officers for dealing with de-escalation with uh, addictions and mental health individuals in uh, acute crisis. And as a result of the additional support that we're going to get from Project Impact and support with counselors being on staff, that's going to make a significant difference in our ability to assist the community. And at the same time, we uh, are making sure that we're doing everything we can to support our members in every facet because we know that this job is evolving and that there's a lot of pressure from not only the calls and the individuals that they're dealing with, but also the public scrutiny of our profession. Yeah, because the, the mental health is certainly an issue in this community and I know the other communities that if we don't have our officers well-trained and have the ability to deal with it, they're taken at home. So that's always a concern for me and I've asked it every year to make sure that in your budget, you have enough money uh, to, to, and it sounds like with the addition that's covered. And the last question I have is more on the budget. Um, and can I ask it, uh, Mayor, now on the budget or are we going to deal with that uh, later on? Um, you, certainly you can ask it and it's up to Chief Callahan uh, what he's able to uh, talk about from an operational point of view. But why don't you ask the question now, Councillor Thompson, and, and um, we can see if he can provide any information for you. Uh, just it's a, a small one on the honorarium for the board. It's gone from 27 to 37. Uh, and maybe that's not Mike, so much for Mike. Maybe somebody else can answer that question. I'm not... Uh... I'm just going to have to refer to that one. Uh, well, there were no changes in the there were no changes in the honorarium rates, Councillor Thompson. Um, okay. There was uh, there were there was a period of time last year where there were several months where we did not have a full component of the police service board because the provincial okay. nominees um, okay. had not been done. So I'm just um, I, yes. I don't want to say guessing. But it's likely that is the case because, as I said, there have been no changes in the monthly stipends that are paid to board members. Okay. Mr. Mr. Mayor, if, if I may add to that as well, just uh, as an indicator that uh, there has been no budget increase from, uh, from 2020 with respect to honorariums. Okay. Um, it's remained the same. Okay. It just in the book here, it shows uh, on, the, on the budget. But And the last question... Um, the budget for revenue was 21, uh, 2 2,154,000, and we actually only got 1,960,000. Any particular reason why the less in revenue um, from, 20, from the budget for 2020 and the actual? Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Thompson, the reason for that is uh, the difference in the funding that we get from Hastings County in relation to our portion of the provincial offense uh, notice or, or the tickets. Mm -hmm. And the second one is, is as a result of uh, changes by the ministry in the, in the way in which they roll out the grant funding and uh, they sometimes within a calendar year change on the fly. Okay. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, right, thank you Councillor Thompson. Um, Councillor Williams. Thank you to your worship uh, and uh, chief. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I'm going to focus on, I think the, the stats you were giving was the officers per, per capita or per, uh, and we compared that to Cornwall and North Bay. Um, I asked chief uh, Gignac last year, just about overtime. 
And is that something we're still having an issue with, uh, with the force with the, with the salaries? Are we seeing still a large amount of overtime? I know that that was what was confirmed last year. Uh, is that something we're still grappling with, with the force here in Belleville? Mr. Mayor to uh, Councilor Williams, yes, it is. It's something that we uh, struggle with literally every day, um, trying to ensure that we have enough resources. And when we have one or two or three very, very significant investigations, such as a very, very uh, complicated historical sexual assault, or if we have a uh, attempt murder or a homicide, sometimes the complexity of those investigations uh, are, are so expansive that we have no option because of uh, having finite resources that we have to incur overtime. But when we look at the overall aggregate budget and the impact of that overtime versus having additional members where there is uh, benefits included, it's still financially sound to do it in the manner that we are. Okay. And in terms of Comparing to the region, we would have uh, way more. I mean, in Belleville, in terms of the center of this area, and, the, and I know from doing ride alongs and being involved in your force, you're a very busy uh, operation. Do, you, do we find that we're, we're kind of taking on the bulk of, of what's happening in the region? I know, for instance, I know we're the only uh, force that has a canine unit right now in the area. Is that correct? Well, we've been fortunate that uh, Kingston is now back up and running with uh, a, a canine program. When we were not in a position to have a canine, Kingston helped us, as did the OPP. The OPP have got a dog here now, and actually, ironically enough, our canine officer and Constable DeLuca from the OPP are training together on a regular basis. So that is really good because you want that interoperability and the collaboration so that when we do have a major crisis, like we had last weekend, um, that we're dealing with uh, each other in a capacity that we have those known training standards and it's a seamless uh, effort. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, I received a uh, letter from the 20 West Mayor, Mr. Harrison, in relation to uh, our assistance with uh, the OPP investigation involving the uh, serious injury of one of their members. So we try really, really hard to make sure that it's seamless. And I, and I think too, Councillor Williams, that uh, when you see the fact that we have three officers from the OPP working uh, with Project Renewal in our police service full time, that's a savings of $400,000 a year. That is so significant, it's unbelievable. And we value that relationship. And to answer your first portion of your question with respect to, um, taking the brunt of most of, of the calls for service. Because our population swells over the daytime, we see our majority of calls for service or our peak demand call in between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. at night. And we try to ensure that we have staffing accordingly to uh, deal with those uh, major peak times for uh, service calls. And as our service calls go up, uh, we don't even advertise. <laughs> You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And, you know, and I think that's important for, uh, for council and the public to know that, uh, you know, and, and, and I know for, for councillors haven't done that to go through a ride along and just see how busy uh, this force is. It is uh, part, I just want to make sure that, uh, that you have the, the correct officers you need and that you're getting, uh, so we're not running into the overtime. And I know that um, specifically some of those officers like Councillor Thompson, had stated that uh, they need mental health and they're getting the help they need because you're a very busy force. And I know that you're trying to improve that. So uh, last comment I'd make is uh, if, I know it's a couple of dollars, but if winter tires are more safe uh, for the force, I would make the recommendation that I would prefer to see safety over rule a couple of pennies uh, saved. I think that's uh, important. I know that uh, the police make sure that our residents uh, have winter tires put on their vehicles it should be the same for, for the officers, but thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, Councillor Millette and then Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Chief Callahan for your presentation. It was, uh, and your uh, presentation to us as councillors uh, in our, uh, our voluminous binder here. Um, just a quick question. I actually, on that comment on the tires, I don't have a problem with the uh, the new four season tires. And the only reason I I say that is is that my local tire guy tried to sell me on uh, on these, and uh, he did a pretty good job. They're not the all season radials that we're thinking that 
uh, these are true four season tires. They're a, they're a little more expensive on the outlay, but as you said, they're uh, they're practical all year round. So I'm I'm fine with that. My my question, and I'll be quick about it, is uh, uh, under paid duties, uh, and uh, those of us who uh, aren't familiar with paid duty, that is the uh, the extra duty for officers, and they're paid uh, to uh, stand guard at uh, and direct traffic on occasion at construction sites, that sort of thing. I see there's a significant increase in that and under issues, $54,400. And just if I can get an explanation for that. And uh, Chief, I would have emailed you and asked you prior to this about that, but uh, I picked it up just last night on rereading this. I'm gonna have to defer to our uh, Director of uh, Finance on that one because I'm not 100% sure. Just one second, please. We've changed in the budget where it's showing. It used to actually be a direct deposit into the expenditure accounts. And so now it looks like there's going to be a big increase, but it's because we're putting the actuals in the line item. So what I'm just instructed is it's a uh, financial um, uh, process whereby historically we weren't putting it in the way it should have been entered into the uh, ledger. So it's being done in a different format now. Uh, we've been working with... Uh, Carol Hines and her team uh, with the city to ensure that the information that we're inputting is done in a format that is uh, not only a standard operating practice, but within the proper line item. So that's the reason for that change. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. All right. Okay. Councillor Kelly. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, question for the Chief. Thank you for your uh, presentation today. Uh, in your presentation, Chief Callahan, you mentioned training costs. Uh, there's going to be a decrease in the budget. My question is what training has been affected by the uh, decrease? And also, uh, second question, you're going to 12 auxiliary officers uh, from 15. Um, maybe you can just educate us all with the uh, role of, uh, of the auxiliary officer uh, with policing and the service here in Belleville. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to ensure, and, uh, and I'll take the first one uh, with respect to the training costs. What we were doing is we were looking at identifying what type of training it was that was absolutely uh, mandatory and legislated. So one of the items was that we had uh, cut was a, uh, a motorcycle training officer. And we have the utilization of the motorcycles and uh, it, it's, a, it's a very good um, policing tool to have as well as a public relations tool. And we historically had had a in-house training officer, but sadly he retired. So that left a vacant position. So we looked at it, we looked at the number of officers that we had trained and said, okay, can we go without a training officer for a year to assist dropping that budget cost down the training costs down and look at it next year? The answer was yes, we could. So those are the types of things. Uh, we did not in any way, shape or form reduce our budget in the areas of training that will affect our ability to carry out the functions that we're mandated to do according to the Police Services Act. So this is training that we also believe that as a result of COVID that we may, may not be able to meet those targets because of the challenges of uh, social distancing, and uh, as well as you know, right now, the Ontario Police College is shut down because of the COVID outbreak. So that has suspended some of our uh, senior training courses as well. But we feel very confident that we're in a position to meet those mandated uh, training requirements. And sorry, the second part of your question was- Special constable? Uh, special constable, yeah, special constable. yeah special constable. auxiliaries. So with the, with the auxiliaries, what we've done is, uh, we have identified that the position of these auxiliaries assist us significantly when we're doing special events, when we're doing uh, specific duties, that uh, they assist us in reducing the cost of having additional officers there that they can buddy up with an auxiliary officer. And what we've done for this year is we're going to, we've had a lot of people that we've actually ended up hiring out of the auxiliaries, which is a great opportunity and developmental opportunity for us to have a look at them. And as a result of those uh, individuals, we looked at it and we said, okay, if we bring it up by say three or four this year, 
um, and bring it to 12, back up to 12, if we don't go to 15, we're gonna save ourselves about $9,000. Next year, we'll be looking at increasing that complement up to the 15 to ensure that we're at the capacity where we need to have those trained uh, auxiliary officers. So it was all, it was, it was definitely 100% okay. cost savings. Great, I see Councillor Kelly said, thank you. So <clears throat> that's, uh, that's good. Uh, anyone else for comments or questions? Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, and thank you, uh, Chief Callahan, for your presentation. I've got two questions, a revenue question, then an expenditure. Um, I talked about it last year, uh, provincial offences revenue. Uh, back in 2018, uh, the actual was 195. Uh, 2019, the actual was 120. 20 actual, uh, and I think this is just a working number. It might not be final. It's only 35,000. Um, you're maintaining your... 2000 for revenue. Now, Hastings County uh, collected approximately uh, 1. Uh, 1.6, or that's what they were budgeting in gross ticket revenue. And uh, they've revenue is split based on the proportionate number of tickets issued. So if the municipality uh, issues more tickets, you get more revenue. And just looking at the breakdown for 2020, um, Hastings County as a whole. Uh, had 156,000 in revenue. Uh, Cooney West had 160, and maybe they get a bump because I know the 401 unit was split and they've assumed some of that. Uh, and Balvo was at 105. Now, I, sitting on a transportation committee, I know that uh, with COVID, there was less vehicles on the road. And in addition to that, I know that there was precautions being taken in terms of uh, traffic stops. But uh, do you uh, envision seeing your uh, provincial offenses revenue uh, increasing over time because it seems to be on a, on a steady decline. Absolutely. What we're looking at doing is we were, uh, did not have our traffic unit fully staffed last year. And as a result of that, we do now. And uh, we're going to be in a much better position to look at uh, some of those challenges that we had in relation to strictly traffic enforcement and understand and appreciating as well during COVID that we were in a situation whereby um, we had actually even been asked by the province to ensure that we were uh, exercising due diligence when we were um, laying tickets for traffic infractions. And knowing that the impact of the community and the individuals who uh, you know, are, are currently without a, a job as a result of COVID and or have had their hours reduced, we were trying to be reflective of that situation in our community. However, I can tell you that traffic enforcement for this year is a priority for our service. Okay, and that's great to hear. And certainly, uh, uh, I know I get a lot of calls about that. I've referred them to the traffic, to the traffic unit. And uh, uh, I know Sergeant Lannon uh, has been advertising the, the general uh, number for traffic complaints. And so I've been directing people there. Uh, with respect to expenditures, and I'm looking at executive services under contingency, uh, 2018, it was 77,000 as an actual. 2019 was 122, and then uh, you have 2020 at 188. That's your base budget, but then you're adding 277,000 in issues uh, for a total this year of 465,000. Just and uh, that's a 147 percent increase. Uh, is there a way you could explain uh, for the large increase there? I'm sorry, unfortunately, Councillor. I'm not in a position to comment on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else for questions or comments? All right, well, Chief Callahan, first of all, uh, congratulations, you made it through your first um, budget uh, process. So that's, um, that's always a reason for uh, congratulations. Um, you know, I, I, and I wanna, um, uh, you know, I, th I think there was a question about overtime and, and certainly all of our, um, on street uh, resources in the entire community have been have been uh, stretched this year. Uh, um, you know, it's sometimes just exposed to being exposed to individuals in the community who have COVID require our officers to um, self isolate uh, while they wait for the results of their tests. Um, that requires us to have other assets that we've got to pull in. Most of the time, putting them into uh, into overtime situations. And, um, you know, it's, it's great to be able to, it's, I think we all appreciate uh, hearing from you that 
you're on top of it. You understand what is causing, causing those issues uh, and are dealing with it, but it is what it is in the sense of uh, there are some things that are beyond our control and it's, uh, it, it's unfortunate. Every business has had to deal with individuals who have tested um, or have been in close proximity to someone who has tested positive and they have to take steps and that's there. Um, I think there was a question earlier about um, one of our newest officers and we're very proud of Officer Bax, uh, the, uh, the, the dog that's with the canine unit and it's wonderful to see him out in the community and working um, and being uh, and being accessed. Uh, you know, those of us that had an opportunity to tour the new police station, see where his office is. And uh, I know that he resides with the officer, but it's uh, it's great to see that. And uh, we want to thank um, members of the community who uh, donated uh, to be able to for us to reestablish that that uh, that um, that area. It's already proven its worth, and uh, and that's been great. A couple items I'd like to address, and I did address them last week at the police service board meeting, but I think it's important for us to do so again. Um, it, it's, it's not uncommon for unfair comments to be directed to the police um, by members of the public in some cases. And uh, earlier this month, we had a mental health and policing forum where you had agreed to participate in the first part to talk about some of your programs. Um, and it was very clear that you would not be um, in, engaging in a dialogue uh, with, uh, with, with residents and the second part of it. Um, but I also, I also know that there were some other things that were going on that evening. Can you just talk about, uh, um, cause there was a comment made about how you should have been on the second half of the call and you should have been participating. Um, so first of all, to make it clear, that was never the expect expectation of you. But secondly, can you tell me uh, or tell us a little bit of what you were dealing with that evening as well? Absolutely, and thank you for the question, Mr. Mayor. At about 10 to seven um, during the night of the forum, we uh, received a call that we were uh, in the middle of a uh, homicide investigation that had just occurred. So if you notice during that forum, I actually got up and stood away from the camera a few times because I was making phone calls and getting phone calls and we were getting assets in place and ensuring that we had the proper resources to deal with the challenges, as well as providing support for the officers that were at the scene because it was a pretty horrific scene. So even if I had wanted to stay, I wasn't in a, in a position and both um, Inspector Meeks and I were uh, dragged away several times uh, trying to deal with that. So um, we have as well reached out to the Peaceful Streets Belleville uh, and asked to uh, meet with them. And we've even provided opportunities if there's concerns about transparency and having the media there to video the entire event. And we've also offered to meet with them three times a year. Um, and uh, as of uh, yesterday, we still have not had a reply on that. Yeah, so, okay, well, you know, cause I, I think there was a comment. I know you were monitoring uh, the second part of, the, of that forum um, while you were dealing with that homicide, but the, it was quite a uncharitable comment, someone suggesting that, uh, that you didn't care and you didn't want to be there. And so I wanted to make it clear because that, that's quite unfair. Um, and then secondly, uh, it's, it's good to know that you have t proactively reached out uh, to that organization um, and uh, that, that they have not responded and taken you up on that offer. So it's, that's important for us to, uh, to be aware. The second item I want to ask you about is got to do with the calls for service. So I think count, I think uh, former councillor uh, Jack Miller, chair of the police service board, mentioned 30,000 uh, interactions. So my understanding of the stats is there's about 23,000 calls for service a year that the Belleville police responded to in 2020. And then there were counter uh, issues where people came into the station. Um, can you just uh, update us on those numbers? And then can you provide any information regarding how many uh, complaints that were received and dealt with? Um, because I think that proportion is important for us to be aware of. Yes, I can, Mr. Merritt. When we look at the 23,000 calls for service, um, those don't include the calls that the officers end up taking, what we refer to as walk-in uh, calls for service at the, at the front desk. And those account for about another 7,000 plus or minus uh, calls for service. And when we look at that, and we look at the number of complaints that we have through both the OIPRD, as well as the Special Investigations Unit of Ontario, when we break that down, on average, we're receiving 0.0009% um, complaints per call. So when you look at that, that's a fantastic stat, stat something we're incredibly proud of. And uh, I think it shows 
two, that we set great pride in ensuring that our officers are, or all the members of our service are conducting themselves very professionally. And um, again, that stat is, is very, very significant to note. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And I think that's important because, you know, a lot of members of the, of the public, um, you know, they don't necessarily follow all the items. They listen to, to some of the discussion. And when people make these uh, unfounded allegations about, uh, you know, that there's a systematic problem, the stats just don't prove that out. And that's a minuscule number of calls for service. When, when you first consider, there are not very many interactions with the police uh, that are um, what I call, um, you know, um, friendly or happy interactions. You know, for example, you're stopping someone who is either uh, suspected or is uh, engaging in a, in a behavior they're not supposed to. And, and that's not the same as just saying hello to somebody on the street. Now, lots of times your, your men and women do say hello to people on the street, but the, the point is it is already, a, you know, it is already a, um, an unwelcome uh, interaction on, the, on one of the parties. And so to have those low numbers is something that's a credit to you and all the women and men that serve with you. And we certainly want to say thank you. The last thing I just want to say, again, it's, um, you know, I'll be supporting the budget again this year. I'm, I'm assuming that it'll be uh, unanimous by council. Um, we want to express to you and the women and men that work with you our appreciation for all that you do. We recognize, and just a couple weekends ago, we saw an example of the the danger that your members put themselves into to keep us safe each and every day. And it would be, um, it would be wrong uh, if we finish this meeting uh, without telling you uh, that we appreciate it and we ask you to pass on to the women and men of the force uh, our gratitude. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So colleagues, um, the resolution is that the presentation by Belleville Police Chief Mike Callahan regarding the 2021 police budget be received and referred to correspondence item 7.2 and operating issue number D1-2. Moved by Councillor McCaw, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. Uh, all in favor, it's carried. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we'll move on to correspondence. Um, and these are just uh, to be received items. So 7.1, um, the uh, resolution that the Belleville Public Library 2021 budget be received and referred to operating issue number D1-1. Moved by Councillor Akar, second by Councillor Alsap. All in favor, it's carried. The 7.2, the resolution is that the Belleville Police Service Board budget be received and referred to operating issue number D1-2. Moved by Councillor McCaw, seconded by Councillor Alsap. All in favor, it's carried. 7.3, the resolution is that the March 11th, 2021 letter from the Bay of Quinney Economic Development Commission be received and referred to operating issue number D2-1. Moved by. Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Williams. All in favor, it's carried. Uh, 7.4, the resolution is that the letter from Doug Stevenson, Executive Director, and Al DeWitt, Chair of the Bay of Quinney Regional Marketing Board, be received and referred to operating issue number D2-2. Moved by Councillor Kelly, seconded by Councillor Alstap. All in favor, it's carried. Uh, item 7.5, the resolution is that the November 30th, 2020 letter from Madonna Howell, Financial Operations Manager for Quinney Way Solutions be received and referred to operating issue number D2-3. Moved by Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Councillor Alsap. All in favor, it's carried. The uh, 7.6 of uh, the resolution is that the letter dated October 16th, 2020 from Bradley McNevin, Chief Administrative Officer, Quinty Conservation be received and referred to operating issue number D2-4. Moved by Councillor Millette, seconded by Councillor Carr. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. 7.7, uh, the resolution is that the Sterling Rodden and District Recreation Center Arena Board proposed 2021 budget be received and referred to operating issue number D2-5. Moved by Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Councillor Kelly. All in favor, it's carried. Item 7.8 uh, deals with the Hastings County Joint Services budget and the resolution is that the Hastings County Joint service budgets be received and referred as follows. Hastings Quinty 911 to operating issue D2-6. Um, provincial offenses to operating issue D3-1. Emergency medical services to operating issue number D3-2. Community and human services to operating issues D3-4. Hastings Manor to operating issue number D3-5. 
and Centennial Manor to operating issue number D36. Moved by Councillor Sanders and second by Councillor McCaw. All in favor, it's carried. Item 7.9, dealing with MPAC. The resolution is that the December 5th, 2020 letter from Nicole McNeil, President and Chief Administrative Officer, MPAC Board of Directors be received and referred to operating issue number D3-7. Moved by Councillor McCaw, seconded by Councillor Alsap. All in favor, it's carried. Uh, 7.10, the Hastings and Prince Edward Health Unit. The January 27th letter from Valerie Dunham, Director of Corporate Services, Associate CEO, Hastings and Prince Edward Health Unit. Sorry. The resolution is that the January 27th letter from Valerie Dunham, Director of Corporate Services, Associate CEO, Hastings and Prince Edward Health Unit be received and referred to operating issue number D38. Moved by Councillor Kelly, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. All in favor, it's carried. 7.1 is the request from the Quinty Arts Council and the resolution is that the February 18th, 2020 letter from Janet Gerald, Executive Director and Andrea Kerr, Chair of the Board of Quinty Arts Council be received and referred to operating issue number D6-1. Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Thompson. All in favor, it's carried. Uh, 7.12 uh, is the 2021 funding request from the BDIA and the resolution is that the letter from Mary Jo Carrier, Chief Administrative Officer of the Belleville Downtown Improvement Area be received and referred to operating issue number D6-7 and administered by the Grant Committee. Moved by Councillor McCaw, seconded by Councillor Alsap. All in favor, it's carried. 7.13 is the uh, summary of the 2020 supports and services provided by the Belleville Chamber of Commerce. And the resolution is that the letter from Jill Raycroft, Chief Executive Officer of the Belleville Chamber of Commerce, summarizing 2020 supports and services provided by the Belleville Chamber of Commerce be received. Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Kelly. All in favor, it's carried. So we did all that housekeeping, which is to officially receive all that correspondence and then forward it to the different sections of the budget. So now we can move into committee of the whole and I'm looking for a motion to go into committee of the whole to hear and consider reports, passing of recommendations and resolutions with myself and the chair, moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Sanderson, all in favor, it's carried. And we will now move to reports. And uh, we'll start with the 2021 operating budget presentation. It is the Director of Finance Treasurer's presentation uh, that is, uh, was forwarded uh, uh, with the budget package to uh, councillors. And uh, I will ask um, Director Hines to have the floor and make her presentation. Following, Following that, that we'll, we'll put a resolution on the floor. floor. Just uh, you need Thank you. Uh, we'll put the resolution on the floor to receive it and then we can ask questions um, and then we'll be able to move on. So Director Hines, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mayor Panchuk. I'm very pleased to be here today to present the uh, proposed 2021 operating budget. It's another unusual year and certainly our first attempt at doing an operating budget with Zoom. So we'll carry on and, and certainly hope for the best. So I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of the managers and directors who worked diligently to develop the issues brought forward in the budget under such challenging circumstances. Thanks also goes out to Brandon Ferguson, Kyle Bertrand and finance support staff who are responsible for the documents in your budget package. Their efforts are greatly appreciated and they're here today to, uh, to assist in the presentation. If there's anything that you're unclear about, please feel free to ask questions at the end of the, the presentation. So we, before we uh, review the details of the proposed 2021 operating budget, I'd like to touch briefly on the recent provincial budget announcements. So included in the budget were a number of measures directed at municipalities. Uh, the only essentially new initiative was the change to the property tax reassessment cycle um, and the province in, cons in consultation with municipalities is considering postponing the January 1st, 2019 current value assessment phase in for an additional year to January 1st, 2023. It was originally uh, January 1st, 2021, and then deferred to January 1st, 2022 in response to COVID-19. So they're looking at extending it for yet another, uh, another year. So this has uh, some interesting consequences. There'll be a lot of dialogue and discussion, certainly between municipalities and the province going forward. Um, the basis for our assessment system in the province is current value. Uh, and I have that in quotation marks. 
Uh, as the January 1st, 2019 revaluation continues to be deferred, uh, the associated values become less relevant. I think we'd all like to ask ourselves what our, what our own uh, personal properties were worth on January 1st, 2019. And uh, in light of all of the, uh, the rapid changes to the real estate market in the last couple of years, I think we'd all be challenged to actually remember what it was worth. Um, in addition, there's so besides uh, property tax reassessment, there's uh, there were a number of other initiatives which were previously announced. So these were part of the 2021 provincial budget, but they had been announced prior to budget date. So these include uh, 200 million for sport and community infrastructure projects, uh, 500 million dollars for additional funding for municipal operating pr pressures, and uh, continued recovery in 2021. $150 million in additional support for municipal transit systems and $255 million for the Social Services Relief Fund to respond to COVID-19 caseloads in shelter settings. And this would apply to our partnership with Hastings County. So a note with respect to the operating budget process. So per the terms of reference for the finance committee, the budget is initially presented to the committee for review and comment prior to submission to council. The committee attended a budget working group meeting on March 9th to review the operating budget. The document provided to you today has been modified from the March 9th version in a number of ways. Uh, we did uh, add the development engineer position. It was originally on the deferred list. We also moved from the deferred list, the Bell Boulevard corridor study, and there have been a number of minor modifications to cost estimates and funding allocations since the March 9th meeting. So management and depart all departments continue to work diligently to reduce costs in many areas. Consistent with last year, finance staff also analyzed the budget and were able to suggest further changes to many accounts with savings in excess of $500,000. 2021 should be considered a transitional year. It's highly unlikely that we'll be able to return to pre-COVID spending patterns until fiscal 22 or beyond. Your budget documents are divided into two sections. Section A is tax supported. Section B is user rate funded with budgets provided for water, wastewater and parking. Your budget documents consist of your issue summaries, issues details, base budget adjustments, COVID-19 budget adjustments, operating budget detail, all 100 uh, plus pages, uh, tax supported tax rate models, and also in your package, there's a list of items that are recommended for deferral to 2022 or beyond. The budget, we're dealing with a number of continuing issues. Increased costs for protective services, specifically fire and police, are a concern. Uh, we need to accommodate growth, so we're currently undertaking plans and studies to accommodate future growth. We're also in trying to ensure a fair cost sharing of growth costs between existing and future development. Social pressures con continue to be a concern. Costs for social housing have risen 4.79% and long-term care by 4.76% and continue to rise. The effective measures introduced by the province over the last year will hopefully mitigate these increases going forward. Social services had, has come in under budget uh, in the last few years due to the significance of these costs for the city. We have placed any excess levy and reserve to help offset future bonding budget increases. In 2021, we are utilizing $100,000 of previous year funding, which is shown in your budget detail. We also face uh, continued demands for increased levels of service. A good example is the transit service extension to Ward 2 proposed for September the 1st, as well as the outcome from the upcoming Parks and Recreation Master Plan, which will introduce additional operating cost uh, implications for the budget. Asset management is, continues to be a concern and something that we have to uh, work towards. Our updated plan will be available for Council's review in June. This plan will be considerably more comprehensive than the existing document and will put additional pressure on our infrastructure management costs. With respect to insurance, the 2021 operating budget includes a 15% increase in the city's insurance premiums. While high, this increase is considerably lower than the 20 and 22% experienced by our municipal neighbors. 
Under separate cover, we have provided you with an excellent summary prepared by Frank Cowan Company of the current municipal insurance environment on in Ontario and the related pressures. Commercial tax adjustments continue to be an issue as well. As noted in my report on tax assessment, the city continues to face new and mounting pressures from our large commercial property owners who are positioned to challenge their assessment on a continuing basis. In 2021, we are also facing new demands with respect to relief for property owners who did not receive COVID relief funding from other levels of government. The Affordable Housing CIP is an incentive program uh, which provides a new strategy for council and also requires a significant level of funding. The 2021 operating budget reflects a net taxation cost of $500,000 for the CIP and $85,000 for the existing facade improvement program. In addition to the $500,000 in the 2021 budget, the city has accumulated $350,000 in reserve for the affordable housing strategy, creating a total of $850,000 available in 2021. The CIP has been approved. However, the financial incentive structure has not been finalized. Finance favors focusing on tax incentives as opposed to grants as they are more easily forecasted and funded. The proposed 2021 operating budget reflects several issues which address council priorities, including future development, the Loyalist Secondary Plan and Bell Boulevard corridor studies are good examples, economic recovery, the Choose Bubble campaign and additional support for e-commerce, transportation and mobility, uh, the War II transit expansion effective for September 1st, and legislative compliance with respect to HR related studies and funding for asset management. I'd like to start with a few comments regarding overall city budget. The total combined city and education tax budget is 181.51 million with the city portion representing both tax and user rates supported. The city 2021 operating budget has increased by 11 million or 7.27% from 2020. Education taxes have dropped by 3.9 million or 17% due to the provincial decision to reduce education tax rates for commercial and industrial property classes in 2021. The proposed tax supported city budget is 133.9 million and the user rate supported portion is 28.7 million. The tax supported city budget has increased 9.2 million or 7.38% while user rate supported budgets have increased 1.8 million or 6.8%. The following graph breaks down the total city budget by funding category. Tax supported is obviously the majority at 82.36%, water is 10.2%, wastewater is 6.98%, and parking is less than 1% at 0.46%. We now move to section A of the tax or the tax funded budget. The following slides provide some of the highlights of the proposed 2021 operating budget. As shown in the issue summary, the overall budget increase for 2021 is 2.99%. Of this increase, city departments have contributed 1.35%, while city boards being police and library represent 1.08%, and external agencies have created a 0.56% increase in the operating budget. As outlined in my report on comparative assessment, the city experienced growth of 1.71% in 2021. Translated in budget terms, this means that the municipal budget could increase by approximately 1.8 million without any change to the property tax rate for 2021. Over the four billing tables, this increase in assessment renders a reduction in the respected property tax rate between 1.52% and 1.81% for 2021. When combined with education, the total proposed property tax change, considering no change in individual property assessment is between 0.29% and 1.40% for the four billing tables. The total impact of COVID-19 is currently estimated at 4.5 million for 2020. This includes OLG revenue losses of 1.6 million. To mitigate the impact, the reserve fund transfer to the OLG accounts has been re reduced by 1.6 million and the balance has been funded by the Safe Restart Agreement funding in the amount of 2.9 million. 
To date, we have received 6.6 .6 million in general and transit related COVID-19 funding. We continue to lobby the province to provide funding relief for the loss of the OLG revenue related to capital. Your budget details provide a breakdown of the COVID-19 impact for each department. Operating issues proposed for council's consideration include GIS strategy implementation, Loyalist secondary plan development, Bell Boulevard corridor study, studies and reviews for human resources, and Ward 2 transit extension for September 1st, as well as the asset management fund contribution increase of $500,000. Within the tax supported operating budget, there are a number of revenue sources other than property taxes. This is a breakdown of the tax supported budget net of departmental revenue, user fees and grants. Other taxation represents amounts charged as payments in lieu of taxation to other governments and agencies. Department re departmental revenue includes user fees and charges, MAT tax, development charges and reserve fund transfers. Department user fees and charges include such revenue as recreation and facility rentals, program fees, transit fares, and passes. To summarize, the tax supported budget is reduced by 25.6 million in user fees and other revenue, leaving a residual of 108 million to be financed by property taxation. The 2021 proposed property tax levy is 2.99% higher than 2020. This graph illustrates the relation of property taxation and other sources of city revenue. Property taxation represents 80.67%, while other revenue, including user fees, investment revenue, and conditional grants, equals 19.3%. This is a breakdown of the tax supported budget, net of user fees, grants, and other revenue. If we look at how the budgets for each section have changed, you can see the budget for city departments has increased 2.19%, which compares positively to city boards, which increased 5.19%, and external agencies comprised of special purpose bodies and a provincially mandated services, which rose 2.87% and 3.25% respectively. As noted in previous years, and as shown in the following graph, Council only controls 61.26% of the operating budget as shown for city departments. City boards represent 21.28% and external agencies constitute 17.46%. This chart provides a breakdown of the net property tax supported operating budget by department. As you can see, the three most significant tax supported costs for the city are protective services being fire, police, 911 and Quinney conservation at 31.25%, transportation and operational services at 12.65% and recreation, culture and community services at 12.93%. In terms of change to budgets from 2020 to 2021, general government reduction is attributable to a shift in sick leave contribution and reserve fund transfers the increase in planning and development is due to annualization of the SIP funding for social housing of $150,000 and reductions to departmental revenue. The increase in recreation and culture reflects a return to normal operations at some point in 2021 and the net cost to the taxpayer of their programs and services. The reduction in health services is due to redistribution of a lexicon funding from other revenue within the budget to the health services line, as well as the completion of the city's commitment to Quinney Healthcare in 2020. This graph denotes the functional composition of the budget as noted. The pink section represents protective services at 31.25%, and the adjacent blue section is transportation and operational services at 12.65%. As touched on briefly earlier in the presentation, the City of Belleville operating budget has been seen significant pressures from the budget requests made by both city boards and provincially mandated services. 
I have to apologize. We're uh, we're having a technical issue with respect to the presentation, so I'll have to pause for a moment. Okay, I think we're uh, back up and going. You want to try that? And I believe we're back. Long slide. So as touched on briefly uh, earlier in the presentation, the City of Belleville operating budget has seen significant pressures from the budget requests made by both city boards and provincially mandated services. This table outlines the increase in each budget expenditure area, such as police and long-term care, as well as what these increases mean for the City of Belleville budget. For example, the Police Services Board budget has increased 4.99%, which translates in that, and I have to, have to qualify that that is the operating portion of their budgets as we've already dealt with the capital portion. Uh, and this translates into an increase in property taxation of 0.94%. Similarly, the budget for social housing has increased 4.79%, which adds an increase to the city budget of 0.23%. We're still having a, a bit of a technical glitch here. Just hold on. So I would suggest Director Hines, just to keep on going, council has these uh, slides in their, in their package and any members of the public that are watching right now can uh, see their, it's part of the agenda package as well. So if you want to uh, continue going, we can follow along with our- Sure. sure. And, and then, then uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully the IT, IT can correct, correct this issue. Okay. So I'm on uh, actually a slide number 19, uh, 2021 operating budget taxation. So since 2017 and over the five year period, the overall city budget has increased by 17.5 million or 19.42%. The most significant relative increases have been for additional debt charges of 25.99%, an increase to funding for capital projects and asset management of 37%, Planning and development of 33%, which includes the housing CIP at $500,000. Environmental services by 42.99%, uh, which includes funding for environmental management and the coal tar issues, heightened stormwater maintenance and increased waste management costs. Recreation and cultural over the five year period has increased 25.8%. And which is impacted by 20 by COVID, obviously, uh, which is about 9% of the increase. Uh, parks has increased 4.25%. That includes additional grass cutting, forestry playgrounds and splash pads, and recreation programs have increased by 3.45%. Within these areas, there have been increases in a number of boards and external agency budgets over the same period from 2017 to 2021, including police at 19.67%, Long-term care at 64.24%, EMS at 25.25%, and social housing at 19.41%. Moving to slide 20. Starting with the issue summary, this breaks down the operating budget into three components, city departments, city boards, and external agencies to clearly indicate how each area affects the overall city budget. The summary starts with a 2020 approved operating budget and breaks down the changes in 2021 by base adjustments, COVID-19 adjustments and issues. As the deferred issues listing details, there were many other worthwhile issues brought forward in our budget planning discussions. The net cost to the city of these additional, additional issues for 2021 is $926,300. Council can expect to see these items presented for consideration in future years. Moving to slide 21. The tax supported base adjustments are 584,000, which represent an increase in the city budget of 0.56%. A summary of the tax supported base adjustments is included in your budget package. A base budget is the funding required to carry on existing programs at the same level of service as last year. Base adjustments include pre-budget approval items, the impact of inflationary changes, one-time charges and revenue, 
known and committed items such as insurance and annualization of previous year operating issues. Pre-approved items include funding for the capital budget and changes to taxation rebate programs, including the increase to the seniors rebate from $600 to $700 annually in 2021. The following table represents a high level summary of COVID-19 adjustments for 2021. Your budget documents also include a more detailed schedule of these adjustments and they're shown on each of the departmental budget detail pages in your documents as well. The most significant items should be noted. Loss of revenue and increased cost of $965,000 for recreation, loss of demand for transit and the net reduction in revenue, lower building permit fee revenue, loss of OLG casino revenue, of which only $534,000 has been recovered through safe restart provincial funding. This effectively ensures that any operating costs funded through OLG are, are essentially funded. However, the province has so far refused to fund the portion of our OLG losses, which is normally attributable to infrastructure programs. To mitigate the COVID-19 costs, reserve fund transfers have been reduced and safe restart funds of 2.9 million have been utilized. Operating issues are yes, no decisions for council. An issue is defined as a change in staff level, service level, policy changes, one-time charges or projects, and major external factors. Issues are meant to highlight new commitments of resources, so council can see, approve, or decline variations from the status quo. Changes to areas outside of city council control, such as boards and external agencies, are treated as issues to emphasize the impact on the budget. In the operating issues summary, changes to boards and external agencies are presented first. This chart provides the budget impact for each issue category. Overall, operating issues added 2.43% to the budget for 2021. This schedule and the following four slides provide the taxpayer impact based on no change in assessment for 2021 for the various taxpayer categories. As noted in my earlier remarks, with education considered, resident residential taxes will increase from 0.29% to 1.45%, depending on area. The same applies to farm and managed forest with increases ranging from 0.29% to 1.45%, again, depending on area. The city has been steadily and slowly reducing the multi-residential ratio to finally reach two in 2020. Multi-residential properties exist in the Belleville urban and rural tax areas only. For these properties, taxes will increase by 0.31% in rural and 1.47% in urban. It should be noted that new multi-residential properties are automatically provided with a ratio of one, which means they pay the same tax rate as residential. For commercial taxpayers, city and education taxes will reduce by 7.93% to to 10.85%, depending on area. There is good news for business property owners in 2021, which I will comment further on shortly. For industrial taxpayers, the combined city and education tax bill will drop by a range of 6.52% to 9.33%, again, attributable highly to education. So in reaction to the economic pressures of COVID-19, the province introduced some measures designed to provide relief to business property owners. The first significant step in response to longstanding lobbying from business groups was a significant reduction in the education rates for commercial and industrial property classes in 2021. The reduction is 10.2% for commercial and 29.6% for industrial. This has an overall reduction for Belleville business property owners of between 6.52% and 10.85%, depending on billing table. It should be noted that there was no change to the education tax rates for residential, farm, or multi-residential property owners in 2021. Another measure was the conceptual introduction of an optional small business property tax subclass in 2021. 
This step would effectively allow municipalities to lower the ratio for property tax owners who met a small business criteria as defined by each municipality. It should be noted that the regulations for this step have yet to be provided and council is cautioned that any reduction for this notional class would negatively impact other property classes. As it only applies to small businesses who own their premises, there would be no similar relief offered for businesses who occupy rented premises. Municipal finance groups have generally responded skeptically to the concept, but will need to monitor further developments and consider the terms of the regulation for 2022 tax policy development. As you may recall, the city has four tax billing tables. Each table pays for a different level of services as shown in the table. Fire, police, transit, and street lighting and certain debt are referred to as area rated. Fire is based on service levels as provided by urban and volunteer forces. Three out of four tables pay for urban police with rural paying reduced levy equivalent to 4% of the total police services board budget. Overall, Belleville Urban pays 81.27% of total property taxation with remaining three tables representing between 2.1% and 8.95% for a total of 18.73%. It should be noted that the proposed trial transit extension to Ward 2 commencing in September would not impact tax rates for Canafton Urban until 2022. This table reflects the current 2021 share of taxation by property class and the number of properties in each class. There's obviously no direct relationship between the number of properties and the share of taxation. It's all about assessment. Some interesting relationships exist. For example, there are 18,853 residential properties representing 91.2% of all city properties and they pay 55.22% of total property taxation. Conversely, there are 1,176 commercial properties representing 5.7% of total properties and they pay 30.67% of total property taxation. As noted in my report on the assessment change from 2020 to 2021, the city has experienced total assessment growth of 1.71%. This represents growth for all property classes. Referring to the table, we have healthy growth in residential and industrial, but minimal change in commercial due to the number of significant tax appeals settled and reflected in the 2021 returned assessment. Based on total city property assessment, residential represents 65.5% and commercial is 18.22%. Referring to the previous slide, they pay 55.2% and 30.7% of property taxation respectively. Based on previously approved 2020 tax rates, the contribution to city finances from growth and assessment for all classes is just over 1.8 million. Most of the contribution comes from residential at 1.4 million. As noted briefly when highlighting the change in taxation for the multi-residential property class and the optional small business class, Ratios are regulated by the province and determine the level of each property class taxation relative to the residential class. Altering a tax ratio for any class will impact all other property taxes classes. For example, lowering the multi-residential ratio between below two would shift more taxation burden to residential and other property classes. A few years ago, we started providing council with this analysis of the change in the property tax rate for each class within each billing table. In this slide and the three which follow, the change in the tax rate is broken down by the impact of assessment or growth, the impact of the change in the 2021 budget. As of an illustration, using the table above for Belleville Urban and the residential property class, starting with the 2020 approved tax rate, the change in assessment has resulted in a 1.523% decrease in the rate, and the pr proposed 2021 operating budget represents an increase of 3.067% for an overall increase in the municipal rate of 1.544%. This slide reflects the details of the property tax rate for Canafton Urban. And as you can see, the impact of assessment growth and the 2021 budget increase differ by each billing table. 
This provides a breakdown for Canafton Rural. And there's also a breakdown provided for rural. And interestingly, on the rural slide, you will note that rural has experienced the highest assessment growth of all of the billing tables for 2021. We now move on to section B or user rate funded portion of the budget where we will address water, wastewater and parking. The proposed water budget has increased by 587,100 or 3.67%. The change is primarily due to base adjustments which have been provided in the budget package for your review. This table provides further details on the proposed water revenue and expenditure budgets. The increase in water revenue reflects the 3.04% rate increase approved by, approved by Council in December 2020. Full details are included in your budget package. The proposed 2021 wastewater budget is $1,101,700 higher than 2020. Schedules of base and COVID-19 adjustments are included in your budget package. The increase reflects the need for funding to accommodate the wet weather master plan and the capital improvements to the wastewater treatment plant. This table provides a summary of the proposed wastewater revenue and expenditure budget for 2021. Full details are included in your budget package. The 2021 budget reflects the approved wastewater surcharge increase of 2% from 77.5% to 79.5% for 2021 which is required to ensure there is adequate funding for the capital improvements necessary to wastewater infrastructure under the wet weather master plan. This explains the increase in the transfer to capital reserve line of $868,000 for 2021. The proposed 2021 city parking budget is 22.59% higher than 2020 which reflects a return to more normal operations in 2021 as we hopefully emerge from the effects of COVID-19. This table provides the proposed 2021 parking revenue and expenditures budget. As you can see, the projected increase in revenue and expenditures for 2021 is based on a return to more normal demand levels. At the end of 2020, the parking reserve fund balance was $1.1,446,200. This fund is established to ensure funding is available park for parking related capital projects. In 2021, the operating budget includes a provision for a transfer to the reserve of $66,400. Just a couple of brief notes with respect to debt. The debt policy was updated in July 2020 to permit borrowing for periods of 25 years or less, depending on the estimated life of the infrastructure being financed. Each year, the Ministry of Finance issues an annual debt repayment limit notice to every municipality. The 2021 annual debt and financial obligation limits have been based on data contained in the 2019 financial information returns as submitted by each municipality to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. For 2021, the maximum annual debt servicing cost for the City of Valville is 25% of our operating revenue, or $37.2 million. The city's projected debt costs for 2021 are substantially below this level at 7.6 million. To protect our credit and ensure financial sustainability, the city's debt policy maintains an annual maximum of 12% of operating revenue. For 2021, this would approximate 17.9 million. So again, even within our own lowered uh, and more restrictive threshold, we are substantially below with that cost projected for seven, of 7.6 million for 2021. With the exception of the Ag Society relocation, which is expected to be more short-term, all other project financing will have a 25-year amortization period. In 2021, we will issue debt for Mineral and Maitland Road at 10.5 million, the new police station at 19.4 million, and the agricultural site relocation at 1.4 million. This schedule provides a forecast of our outstanding debt from 2020 to 2026, split between taxation and user rate funded. At the end of 2026, we are estimating total debt outstanding of 137.5 million, which will vary as the Ag Society draw may be paid in full prior to the end of 2026. 
A few notes on how reserves, uh, we have a number of reserves and reserve funds. The proposed operating budget has utilized a number of reserve fund transfers throughout departmental budgets to reduce the impact of taxation. As most bylaws have been created for specific purposes, there is generally very little discretion on their use. A reserve slash reserve fund uh, definition is as follows. A reserve is an allocation of accumulated net revenue. It has no reference to any specific asset and does not require physical segregation of money or assets. Examples would include an insurance reserve or sick leave reserve. A reserve fund, on the other hand, exists where assets are segregated and restricted to meet the purposes of the reserve fund. Just a few remarks on closing. Uh, tax rates will be forwarded to the April 12th council meeting for approval and property tax bills will be mailed the last week of July. Remaining tax installment dates are May 27th, August 27th and October 28th. COVID-19 grant funding has to su supplement for OLG casino revenue losses continues to be actively solicited at the, for, at, with the province. City user fees and rates will be subject to an overall review by city departments commencing in September 2021 with recommendations provided in late 2021 for implementation in 2022. Reassessment originally scheduled for January 1st, 2022 may now be deferred until January 1st, 2023. The asset management plan will be updated and finalized in June and will provide guidance for development of the 2022 capital budget. We recently received word that the 2021 and subsequent deadlines have been postponed by one year respectively. As we have already completed the substantial portion of the plan update, we plan to maintain the original schedule and deliver the new plan to council in June. This will be an important resource for the development of the 2022 capital budget. The Parks and Recreation Master Plan will be completed shortly and will provide recommendations for future related capital and operational needs. A placeholder of $375,000 was approved in the capital budget to provide funding for projects once the plan is approved. This concludes my presentation and I'm available to address any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Director Hines, uh, and thank you very much for you and all of your staff for all the work that you've been doing. Uh, colleagues, any questions uh, for Director Hines on the presentation she just made? Okay, we'll get into the specifics later on in terms of budget items, but I see there are now a couple hands of going hands going up. Councillor Thompson? Yeah, just a question, Mr. Mayor. Um, on particular items in the budget, like I have a question on wastewater, uh, the debt, and transit. Do you want to deal with those as each one? We address of those, those with the wastewater budget, Councillor Thompson. Pardon? Yeah, well, because I'll ask if people have any issues they want to raise, and that would be the right time. Okay. Um, okay. Well, then the one thing just on the uh, the debt, what's the um, what's a comfortable debt load for the city? I see where uh, we could get up to a maximum of one fifty six. Uh, Carol, what's a comfortable debt load for the city? Uh, Councillor Thompson, we refer to our, we don't necessarily look at dollar values for debt load. We look at more in terms of what the debt servicing costs are. And I think I referred to uh, the annual debt repayment limit that's prescribed by the province, uh, which is 25% of operating revenue, but we actually set an even lower level for ourselves of uh, 12%. And so, which would be about 17 million for 2021, uh, but we actually, our projected debt costs are substantially below that at around 7.6 million. So we're substantially below any acceptable or any standard and just um, financial uh, benchmarks in terms of our debt servicing costs for 2021. Okay, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Director Hines and uh, Mayor. I'll have the other couple of questions will be during the times they come up at uh, Council's office. Great, thank you, thank Councillor Thompson. Councillor Alsap. Councillor Alsap. Yes, thank you, Mayor Panchak. Uh, I just had a question as it relates to departmental uh, revenue. Um, on slide 12, it says that uh, revenue for uh, development charge funding was $100,000 in 2020. And in 2021, we're projecting uh, 1,030,000, a 930% uh, increase. So could you just explain uh, what's going on there? 
We have a number of uh, initiatives within the planning and development area. We have a number of studies that are funded uh, uh, in whole or in part through development charges. So it depends on uh, the initiatives, initiatives being undertaken in any given year and whether we can actually use development charge funding for those. Okay. Okay, that looks like that. Okay, that looks question. like that. Anyone, else? Question. Anyone else for questions? Councillor Councilor Carr. Carr. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Director Hines, for your presentation. Very comprehensive, and it's also a good overview for, for residents to get an understanding of how uh, how we get to where we uh, do at the end of budget. Uh, with regards to debt and uh, the debt uh, implementing in 2021, uh, police headquarters at 19.4 million. And we heard earlier that there's a million dollars that are that's included in their operating budget for this. Uh, what do you envision in terms of the um, duration of the debt? And are we applying that uh, million? Or are we just going to add it to the bottom line to reduce the amount? Uh, to Councillor Carr, um, we'll be at, we'll actually be using that $1 million allocation as part of uh, the debt funding for 2021. And okay. we project, uh, because it's a facility, I believe the term of the debt will most likely be 20 years, but we haven't finalized the uh, the draw yet, so. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, anyone, okay. Else? anyone else? Okay, seeing okay, none seeing then, none uh, then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Hines. Uh, the resolution is that the Director of Finance Treasurer's 2021 operating budget presentation be received. Uh, moved by Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Councillor uh, Thompson. Um, all in favor, it's carried. Um, now I'm gonna ask uh, Councillor Sanderson as chair of the finance committee, if you want to make any uh, brief comments uh, now before we uh, receive some information and take our break. Uh, Councillor Sanderson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so on, on behalf of the uh, finance committee, which is uh, Councillor uh, Thompson, Mayor Panchuk and myself, uh, I want to thank uh, all members of our executive management team, and, and in particular, our finance group uh, led by Director Carol Hines, uh, along with our external uh, partners for preparing the 2021 budget. It, uh, it takes a significant amount of time, collaboration, and effort uh, to develop the final uh, draft product. And the, uh, the 2021 budget is prudent uh, and responsible. And it sort of recognizes that uh, 2021 is a year of recovery uh, as we navigate uh, our way out of the uh, COVID pandemic. So the 2021 budget is geared towards uh, delivery of uh, excellent service to our residents uh, while targeting investment and growth and the organization. The city's organization is evolving to meet the challenges and opportunities ahead. And I'm pleased that specifically within the area of human resources, this budget serves to provide the support necessarily, not only to comply with legislation, but to move forward on the fundamental underpinning of the entire organization with key studies uh, such as pay equity, job evaluation, uh, organizational structure, uh, policies and procedures. And, and these are really key deliverables for our council. Uh, councilors will, uh, will come and go, councils will come and go, but the foundation of uh, the city's success is built uh, upon the shoulders of the city's organization and staff. And uh, we must position the organization and meet the challenges ahead and leave it stronger than when we were elected to council. So as mentioned in the uh, uh, director's presentation, we've seen, uh, we've seen increases, uh, certainly from uh, Hastings County in the areas of uh, social services, EMS, housing, and long-term care. So the experience of 2020, uh, even with the federal and provincial uh, financial assistance has sort of raised the bar in both the expectation 
and demand of these critical services. So as a community, uh, we need to support each other in these key areas. Uh, last year, uh, we were able to hold the line on taxes, but as a fast growing uh, community, we need to invest in the key areas of growth. And there is a modest tax increase over 2020 to support that area. So just in closing, I'd like to once again thank uh, Director Hines and her staff for the, the diligence and uh, professionalism in preparing the 2021 budget in support of our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, uh, Sanderson, and thanks for your, your uh, leadership on that committee. Um, we have four items to um, receive and then we'll take our break. Uh, so item 8A2, um, the property assessment analysis. The resolution is that report number DF 2021 06, dated March 30th, 2021, regarding 2021 property assessment analysis, be received. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Thompson. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, 8A3, excluded expenses as required by Ontario Regulation 284 uh, slash 9. And the resolution is that report number DDF 2021 01, dated March 30th, 2021, regarding excluded expenses as required by the Municipal Act, Ontario Regulation 284 um, slash 9 uh, be received. Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Kelly. All in favor, it's carried. The 2021 final tax billing due dates. Uh, the resolution is that a bylaw to set the final 2021 due dates for the collection of taxes and the payment of taxes by installment for properties in the residential new multi-residential, multi-residential, commercial, landfills, new construction, commercial, industrial, new construction, industrial, pipeline, farm and managed forest classes be prepared for council's consideration. Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor McCaw. All in favor, it's carried. And then uh, 8A5, asset management contribution. Uh, the accounting coordinator's report number AC 2021-06, Operating issues, sorry, the resolution is that pursuant to the accounting coordinator's report number AC 2021 06, asset management contribution be received and referred to issue number D4 5. Moved by Councillor Alsap, second by Councillor Sanderson. All in favor. So just before I ask for a motion to go in camera, we're going to take a break until 11 o'clock, colleagues. At 11 o'clock, we'll reconvene in camera. And uh, for, the, for the benefit of the media and the uh, public that are watching, um, we will have our in-camera session, then we'll take our lunch break. So we will come back to open session at 12.15 today, um, and, uh, and then we will deal with uh, the item details and the rest of the budget. So um, I read out earlier the items that we're going to uh, meet in camera. I need a motion to go in camera. Moved by Councillor Alsap, second by Councillor McCaw. Um, adjourned until 11 a.m. Thank you.
Hi, everybody. Um, so before we go in camera, we're going to have to ask anyone that doesn't have an in camera issue to drop off the meeting and join again at 1215. So, um, yeah, and if I kick you out, you are in trouble. So uh, you've got, if you can please do that, I'll add it to the uh, chat, but anyone that is not in camera, so uh, or doesn't have an in-camera uh, matter, then you would drop off. So council stays on. Uh, Carol, Karen, Veronica stays on. Um, but yeah, I'll put it in the chat as well. But before we start again at 1215, it can only be the people that are in camera. Tell Bill Glisky to get out. He's already gone. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the meeting has been locked, so you can't. You can't rejoin right now. I thought for a minute there, I thought, well, there's a reporter's uh, dream, but all right. <laughs> yeah, unless there's a good IT guy around to ruin that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mark, it's it's uh, Quinny Sports and Wellness Center. We're just verifying that we come back on at 1215, right? That is correct. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. I'll go off and log back in at 1215. That's correct. Thank you.
I should be there right now. There you go. I can see you coming in. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark. I uh, see Steve Ashton or Barry DeCola. Are you listening? Because if I kick you out of this meeting, it's going to be really hard to get you back. I need you to drop off until we reconvene at uh, 1215. Steve dropped out. Barry, you listening? No problem. Thank you very much, Barry. No attendees came back, and I just need to. Yes. Okay, we are good to go. Thanks, everybody, for your cooperation. So we are on the uh, pink uh, items now for in camera, and I'll start with the disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Seeing uh, nobody, and I can't see Williams and Macaw, but I, sorry. No, I'm here. Okay, yep, I'm just waiting for directions. <laughs>